Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about service discovery in microservices. So when it comes to microservices, the communication between the services is one of the most challenging thing. And uh, service discovery is one of the pattern that makes this inter-service communication easier. So in this video, we are going to talk about what is the service discovery and what kind of challenges are there uh, in the communication between the services and how this pattern actually solves the problem. Now, this is a simple microservice design for a typical e-commerce application. So you have an order service, inventory service, and the payment and the product service. So usually in a microservice design, you need to have the services talk to each other. So in this case, assume uh, if you are uh, placing an order in an e-commerce application, so now the order service has to talk to the inventory service to make sure that the application is available in the start, right? Now, how does the order service talk to the inventory service? The challenging part here is, uh, let's take a very simple client service communication, how it happens. So you have, a, you have a client and you have a server. So how a simple client server communication happens? For the client to talk to the server, you actually need the address of the server. So the address of the server is nothing but a simple uh, combination of IP and a port. So you need to know the address of the server so that the client can initiate the connection. In this case, uh, most of the time in the microservices application, uh, for high availability, the services will always run multiple instances of the same service. Okay. Since you have multiple instances of the same service running, so how does the order service know which instance of the inventory service it needs to talk to? So that's the challenge here. And this is a typical challenge, and how would we solve this problem, right? One of the very straightforward approach to solve this problem is just put a load balancer in front of the inventory service. You put the load balancer in front of the inventory service, and then the load balancer will make sure it routes the traffic to all the instances. That's a very simple approach, right? But the problem here is not only the order service talks to the inventory service, the inventory service also talks to the product service, and the product service may talk to the payment service and order to payment, and there are a lot of inter-service communication happen in the microservice design. So if you go with the load balancer approach, at some point of time, you will end up with a lot of load balancers. You will end up in a fleet of load balancers in your infrastructure. And that is definitely difficult to manage and scale. Because when, when you have to add more number of functionalities in your microservice application, you may have to increase your number of services as well. And when you go with the load balancer approach, you may also have to increase the number of load balancers as well. And that is going to be really, really difficult to manage and maintain. So that's one of the challenges uh, with the inter-service communication in microservices. The another challenge is, even if you go with the load balancer approach, how do we configure the load balancer? So usually when we have a load balancer, we have to tell the load balancer, so these are the list of uh, server addresses where you need to route the traffic to. So that is something, the input that we need to give to the load balancer. But in case of a microservice design, usually the address of the server is not static. The address of each instance is not static, it is always dynamic. So let's try to understand why it is always dynamic. So let's assume you have, uh, we have four different servers. So we have four different servers, server one, server two, server three, and four. Now we want to deploy this microservice application into these servers. How will we do that? So one of the very simple approaches, you can put all the instances of the order service into the server one. And you can put all the instances of the inventory service into the server two. Similarly, you can put the payment and product into the server three and four respectively. Now, this is one of the very simple approach to deploy your microservice application into the service, right? Now, the challenge here is, by doing this, you will get a static address for each of your service. Because you know the order service is always running in the server 1, and inventory service is always running in the server 2. So, you can configure your load balancer accordingly. That is very straightforward. But the problem here is, in case if the server 1 goes down, your entire order service goes down. In case if the server 4 goes down, your entire product service will go down. So the uh, users cannot uh, use the order service anymore, 
they cannot place any orders anymore in the application. So this is not a good practice to deploy all the instances of a single service into a single server. That's not a very good practice in microservices design. So what is the best practice? So usually it's always better to distribute the service instances across all the VMs. Say for example, you can run the two instances of order service here and two instances of order service here. Similarly, you can run a couple of instances, inventory instances in the server 2 and a couple of other inventory instances in the server 1. If you do this, even if the server 1 goes down, your order service will not go down. It will be still running in the server 2. So the end users can still use your application and place the orders. So this is the best practice in the microservices design that you don't stick all your microservice instances into the single server. Instead, you spread them across all the VMs. But how do we do that, right? Who will take care of this orchestration? So there are a lot of workload orchestration tools available in the market, like a Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, and the HashiCorp Nomad is available. So these tools actually takes care of distributing your service instances across all the VMs. Now let's come back to your uh, let's come back to your, our uh, service discovery issue, right? So once the service instances are distributed across all the VMs, now the address of these instances becomes dynamic because we do not have any control over on which server these instances will be running, right? So it might be running in server one, sometimes it might be running in server four. In case if you if one of the order instance goes down, when it comes up, it might come in the server four or in the server three. So the address of those instances are not static, it is going to be dynamic and it will be taken care of by the workload orchestration tools. So it is impossible to configure the load balancer statically with the instance addresses. So that is not possible. So this is where service discovery comes into picture. So service discovery is actually a pattern that dynamically locate your service instance address and then route the traffic accordingly. So there are a lot of service discovery tools available. Uh, so these tools basically uh, keep track of all your service and then it keeps track of in which server these service instances are running. And then whenever you try to initiate a service to service communication, it will make use of that information and then route the traffic accordingly. Say for example, uh, so let me, uh, let me put a simple diagram on how these service discovery tools actually store the information. So they actually have to keep a list of all the services so they need to have the service ID and also the address. So they have to keep track of all the services, right? So they will have something like order service and the corresponding address. Say for example, if the order service is running in server one and two, then the address will be something like one comma two. And also for inventory service, it might be running in three comma four. So similar to this, the service discovery tools actually keep track of all the services and their corresponding server, uh, server instances. So when the order service wants to talk to the inventory service, first it needs to query the service catalog. So this is called as the service catalog. It contains all the information about the service and the address of the service. So the order service first needs to query the service catalog and then it get the address information and then it route the traffic to the inventory service. So sometimes some service discovery tools also keep tracks of the health of the service. Uh, so for example, the order service might be running in server one and server two, but for some reasons, the server two is not healthy. In that case, uh, whenever, when the inventory service wants to talk to the order service, it will get only the instance one and then drop the traffic to the one. It won't drop the traffic to the unhealthy instance. So that is also taken care of by the service discovery tools. So this is how the service discovery tools actually solve the problem of uh, inter service communication. So, as I said, there are a lot of service discovery tools available. Uh, one of the most popular service discovery tool is HashiCorp Console. So, Console is a very popular platform uh, for the service discovery. So, you just need to run the Console agent in all your VMs and then it takes care of keeping track of all your services and the instance addresses and then it keeps, uh, ma it makes sure routing the traffic accordingly. And, and Kubernetes also have a default service discovery tool, which is ATCD. Uh, so that there are more uh, number of service discovery tools available, which we can make use of in the microservices application. 
So you can always go ahead and learn about uh, more information about these service discovery tools. And also these tools, in addition to doing the service discovery, they also take care of more number of responsibilities, like they take care of the authentication between the services. Some service discovery tools also do circuit breaking between the services. So you can also uh, go ahead and explore those topics as well. Uh, I hope this video is really useful. Uh, thanks for watching. Audio jungle.